Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Creme 2 News First at Four. I'm Tom Sherry. It's good to have you with us. I'm Jane McCarthy. Happening right now, people are gathering at Spokane's Planned Parenthood for a pro-life event. On Tuesday, a pro-choice protest happened near Spokane City Hall. Now, this comes after several states passed restrictive abortion laws. Spokane police tell us they had no problems last night and are planning for mo uh, more protesters this evening. Creme 2's Tim Pham found out what security measures are in place to make sure the event stays peaceful. He joins us now with more. Tim. Yeah, an Eastern Washington pro-life group called Church at Planned Parenthood is planning what they're calling a worship service tonight. And you can see they are setting up right now and police have actually secured off the area and uh, one lane is blocked on Indiana right now in front of Planned Parenthood. This all comes after lawmakers in several states, including Missouri, Georgia and Alabama passed restrictive and controversial abortion laws. Counter protesters are also expected, but we haven't seen them yet. But as we We've seen before at these types of events, they can bring out a lot of emotions in people, and that's why security is top of mind. It's not unusual to see people voicing their opinions outside of Planned Parenthood. You might see a few people or a small group, but tonight a larger event is planned by a local group that's gaining national attention. Safety and security is top of mind for many. Spokane police prepared in advance to make sure the event stays peaceful. The department says they have an increased presence of uniformed and non-uniformed officers. Your right to protest and your right to express yourself should not impede or infringe on somebody else's right to get through their day. Sergeant Terry Pruniger says if you choose to exercise your First Amendment right, that doesn't mean other rules don't apply. Uh, make sure you don't block pedestrian pathways, don't uh, block vehicle pathways, uh, don't be disorderly, don't incite violence or anything like that. It's not just police who are stepping up security. We reached out to Planned Parenthood. They tell Creme 2 they have a strict non-engagement policy for Planned Parenthood staff and they have security teams on site. On days they have large protests, patients are escorted in and out of the building. Large protests are not new to Spokane. You may remember in 1999, hundreds of people with opposing views filled the streets. Police had a large presence then, but Sergeant Pruniger says whatever the debate, people in Spokane can usually come together peacefully. That's kind of the common standard around here in our community is we don't have large issues, and yet people do have opposing views. They come together and they express them. They get their message out without harming anybody else or each other. Okay, so what you're seeing out here, this grassy patch in front of Planned Parenthood is where this service will take place. We asked the police department if they could tell us where counter protesters are setting up. They say typically that happens across the street here, but just driving in here today, we've seen police officers surrounding the perimeter of Planned Parenthood several blocks in. We've seen probably upwards of more than a dozen police officers making sure that this event is safe at the nearby park as well. We'll stay on top of this and bring you updates throughout the evening. Live in Spokane, I'm Tim Pham, Krem 2 News. Thank you, Tim. The Washington Attorney General is suing some of the largest opioid distributors and manufacturers in the nation. This is all in an effort to curb the opioid epidemic in our state. Mark Hanrahan joins us now in the studio with more on the lawsuit. Mark. Yes, good afternoon, guys. The lawsuit is against Purdue Pharma. That company manufactures Oxycontin, one of the more popular opioids. According to court documents, Purdue started out marketing the drug to doctors. The company sold it as a way to treat chronic pain with a low risk of addiction or overdose. However, Attorney General Ferguson says there is not much research to back up the claims. The Attorney General has also brought a separate lawsuit against three distributors. They are the ones who actually provide doctors with the drugs. Ferguson argues these companies are responsible for allowing over prescription. Literally. There are about a dozen counties in our state, many of them in eastern Washington, where these distributors sent more prescriptions, again, not pills, prescriptions, than there were people in those counties. 
So our Casey Decker spoke with the Washington Attorney General about this, and he will share more of his conversation coming up in our 5 o'clock newscast. For now, guys, we'll send it back to you. Thank you, Mark. Two children are home safe after spending the night in British Columbia's wilderness. The six and seven year olds were on a hike with their father when they took a wrong turn and then fell down a steep cliff. Well, that cliff was way too steep for the children to climb, so the father made the decision to leave his children behind to go get help. Crews searched the area and found the siblings huddled near a creek. Kids did what they were supposed to do. They stayed put and uh, they were they were invisible, pretty much like a rock. They were hiding underneath a gray sweatshirt. Well, all three family members were taken to a nearby hospital and they're all going to be OK and they're happy to be oh, home. Boy, good ending. In Western Washington, Seattle Children's Hospital is trying to pinpoint the source of a dangerous mold. It was found in several operating rooms there. Those rooms are closed until further notice now. Now the mold is called Aspergillus. Doctors say it is a common fungus often present in the air we breathe, but in rare cases it can cause complications for patients. Um, so the idea is that the Aspergillus in the air could settle in the, the wound while it's open during surgery and cause an infection. That's our primary concern. A hospital spokesperson says it will likely take a week or two before the hospital can resume regularly scheduled surgeries. So if you or a family member has an upcoming surgery at Seattle Children's, you can call the hospital's hotline. That number is listed on your screen. Turning our attention to the forecast, it kind of feels like Mother Nature's given us some mixed <laughs> messages here. Really, we get a little bit of sunshine, then the cloud cover moves yep. in. We're going to get a real mixed message on Friday. Tracking storms are coming our way on Friday. In the meantime, when you see the Doppler radar right here, you can see that we've got no precipitation really occurring across the inland northwest, even though we've got plenty of cloud cover out there. We're at 68 degrees and mostly cloudy skies. Out at the airport, wind is out of the east at 11 miles per hour. Day planner forecast is calling for uh, decreasing clouds in the overnight hours. We'll see a low of 48 degrees. We'll start out with sunshine on your Thursday. It's going to be a nice warm day. Then you'll see increasing clouds and becoming breezy late tomorrow afternoon into the evening hours, but we're still going to climb all the way up to 76 degrees. This is a big weekend coming up, not only a weekend in which we remember our veterans who've who've passed away, but at the same time, we've got kind of the unofficial start of summer coming on and it looks great. We'll look for rain and thunderstorms Friday lingering into Saturday with a daytime high Saturday of 71 Sunday, though, partly cloudy in 76. My gosh, look at Memorial Day Monday, a high temperature of 79 degrees. Not a bad way to start the unofficial start of summer. Very nice. All mm -hmm. right, Tom, thank you. Veterans who served our country are entitled to a final salute from a military honor guard mm -hmm. when they're laid to rest. So before they arrive at the cemetery, there is another group of caretakers who watch over them, and that is airline workers. Alaska Airlines recently started a company-wide program designed to ensure military members are treated with the utmost respect. Employees recently unveiled a custom cart made to carry flag draped caskets. Other carts are on standby at airports across the country. Volunteers want to build a fallen soldier cart for every airport that Alaska Airlines serves. On top of that, Alaska reps say any airline can use their carts. The company also rolled out military themed jets to carry veterans and their families to Arlington National Cemetery. Susan Woods sent off the body of her husband of 37 years mm. from SeaTac. Now he was an army veteran who served in Korea and Vietnam. Can I step up to it? I'll see you soon, dear. Mrs. Woods will join her husband at Arlington National Cemetery for a ceremony next month. Mm.